Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to this PhD defense seminar of Ye Shu, standing right next to me here. Um, my name is Sebastian Bader, I'm um, the chairman for the seminar uh, and I have also been during the last five years one of the supervisors of Ye Shu during his time at Mitsubishi University where he has performed his PhD um, studies at the Department for Electronics Design. Uh, together with me, uh, we have also here Bengt Ullmann, who, who you can't see, but he was uh, also one of, of Yeshu's supervisors during that period. Um, in addition to, to the respondent Yeshu, I would like to introduce and welcome specifically a few people that are very important for this process. Um, we have online uh, the opponent who will, who will lead the questioning uh, after a short presentation of the def uh, respondent, um, who is Professor Carlo Trigona from the University of Catania, Italy. Welcome, Carlo. Um, we have from the UK, uh, Dr. Alex Vedel, who will be part of the grading committee, uh, as well as Professor uh, Mustafa Arafa from the American University in Cairo, Egypt. Uh, and then here in the room, we also have, as part of the grading committee, Professor Kent Bertelsson, uh, professor here at Mitsubishi University, who will also be part of the grading committee. Um, so just shortly to go through the process, uh, some of you might be the first time attending a process here at Mitsubishi University. Um, after the short introduction, I will give the word to Ye Xu to give a, a presentation of his PhD thesis. Uh, that will take approximately 40 to 45 minutes, uh, summarizing basically his work. Uh, we will then take a short technical break uh, just to fix some stuff here in the room, so about 10 minutes. Um, and then we will continue with the, the questioning, you could say, the discussion, uh, where we'll start with um, the opponent who, who will lead the scientific discussion with you. Um, and, and after that, when the, the opponent is, is satisfied with that discussion, um, we'll go on to the grading committee and give each grading committee member uh, uh, the chance to, to ask some additional questions um, to the respondent. Uh, and then finally, after, after that, when the grading committee is satisfied, we will also open up the, the chance for everyone else um, here in the room or on Zoom to, uh, to ask any questions that they have. Um, maybe just uh, as a clarification, right now we, we are people here physically in the room. Uh, we have people on Zoom and we have, of course, also the possibility some of you might be on YouTube. Um, for everyone who's on YouTube, you will only be have, have the chance to listen to, to Yeshu's presentation. Um, you, you will not be able to attend the, the discussion afterwards. Uh, so for that you have to be part in, in Zoom or in the physically in the room. Well, I, I hope I didn't forget anything important. Uh, I'll, I'll come back later a little bit uh, to guide you through this process. And with that, I will give the word to Ye Xu. Um, and um, the first question that I will ask you before you can give your presentation is if you want to present the thesis as it was printed and distributed, or if there are any changes uh, uh, yes, in the I thesis. Yes, some big erratas. I will present the first. Yes, OK. Then, well, give your erratas, and then you can yeah, uh, present your thesis. Yeah. So so thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Uh, first, I will show some errors in the thesis. Okay, so the paper four in the thesis should be uh, energy harvesting, not energy harvester in the thesis. As well as the paper four is uh, accepted and published in the energy conversion and measurement X. So this is the error. Okay, let's we start. Uh, I will repeat my name, Ye Xu. So this study, I'm focused on the energy harvesting. But using a method is called a variable reluctance for the rotational energy harvesting. Uh, so the variable reluctance is uh, knowledge of the concept in the electromagnetics. Okay, let's we start. Uh, first, I will show the what I'm going to present in this presentation. Uh, I give you some introduction part. So why annual harvesting and the uh, motivation for the variable reluctance. Then I will give you some of the basic uh, information on the theory part, like uh, what's the variable reluctance and how we uh, evaluate the performance. And based on the theory part, uh, can help me for the research implementation. 
like the uh, transducer design. So this VAR transducer is a major study on this research. Then I will show you how to use it for his task for the energy harvesting to realize the self-power sensor. Then uh, depends on the, this uh, application, I have some the, uh, study on the interface. So this is a circuit level study. Uh, the last part, I will move to the con conclude this work. I will give you some examples in the future. OK, so let's start. So fr first thing first, what's energy harvesting? Uh, I think for our general understanding, it's like electricity generation. It's like from the, in the power plant, we convert energy from the oil, natural gas, or the convert energy from nuclear wind flow uh, and the solar energy to the, uh, to the electrical energy for our home and in the industrial use. So this is a general understanding. Uh, Moreover, the power plant is far away from our the city, so we need like the electrical grid to dispute the power to different, uh, uh, how to say, area or city. Well, in recent 20 years, any harvesting should be in his defense, since we can see it's a, it's a small scale energy generation. So can power the load up to like a few watts. Uh, it's very small. And uh, uh, because in the recent 20 years, uh, the the development of the microprocessor, uh, mi like the micro uh, semiconductors and the microelectronics, can allow the sensor, for example, to complex his task uh, with less power consumption. So we require like a small power generator close to the sensor. That's why it's called a local power generator. Generator give a small amount of power for his operations. And uh, their connection can be very short, maybe in, in one the circuit board or the, this local generator can be increased into uh, the, the sensor. So this is the uh, annual harvesting and his load uh, sensor. But why we need this kind of combination? Uh, to, to answer this, I would like to show my background of this research. OK, uh, we would like to design a condition monitoring system for hydraulic motor from Bosch. Uh, this hydraulic motor is for the heavy industrial use, is a drive unit of, of any of these heavy industrial applications. So there are many sensors, uh, like speed sensor or the temperature sensor, or some of the oil flow because it's a hydraulic system, and uh, uh, detect any event and change from the hydraulic motor, and convert to like electrical signals, the so voltage and the frequency, to user devices for the maintenance, for the control. But as we know, sensor need power. He can't power by the hydraulic system. So we need electricity power, like battery or cable. But as we know, uh, battery will be used up. We need people to replace and recharge. So this is a, a, a maintenance, extra maintenance cost. As well as the cable, uh, his ins installation is a, a cost of time and uh, money. Uh, also, they limited the sensor's deployment. For example, if we let the sensor uh, fix on the router unit, how you can power it by cable. So that's the solution. Why not using energy harvesting? Uh, but the energy source, where we can harvest, when we come from the surrounding of this hydraulic motor, uh, like uh, wind or the associated noise, or we can harvest uh, photo energy, like uh, light, the solar energy, or the radio frequency energy. Or we can harvest energy from the hydraulic motor itself. As the operation of the hydraulic motor, uh, they will release heat, so we can harvest thermal energy, as well as the rotation and the vibration. So that's the uh, how we have uh, the energy source of the energy harvesting system. Well, but this hydraulic motor works in a harsh environment like mining, so we need a very strong, uh, robust. Uh, robust energy harvesting method uh, to supply the power for the sensors as well for the con uh, so, so let this condition monitoring wor uh, system work. Uh, but uh, which method should be a uh, uh, good choice? Uh, for this, I have a uh, like very short lecture review. Uh, thanks to Dr. Friedrich from Lula University and uh, G in his uh, uh, very short uh, survey study and show uh, some of the method and uh, he suggests variable reluctance and, uh, uh, because it's a very simple structure, so it has a high robustness. 
and, uh, and uh, can work with this uh, hydraulic motor in the harsh environment. Uh, so this study, uh, because I studied uh, this research on the October 2016, uh, there are not too much uh, uh, prevent studies on the variable reluctance for the annual harvesting. Uh, they, are, they are focused on the specific uh, applications, but they are uh, limited on the basic structures for the high rotational speed. Uh, well, you can try the Google Scholar and uh, set time like 2016. Uh, you can't find too much information about the variable reluctance for annual harvesting. So why not? This is a very big research gap we can use for the rotating annual harvesting and uh, uh, work with this hydraulic motor. So that's why in this research, we want to have a closer study to give a deeper investigation to show everybody how to design, not like what to de de design in the prevent studies. Uh, also, they are focused on the high speed, so we are, we are addressed on the low speed. So this is a why variable reluctance. Uh, but uh, what's the variable reluctance? I will show his basic structure. Uh, there are two major parts. First part is called the uh, pickup unit, and uh, also the another part is called the rotational uh, uh, two, two wheel in the rotation. So there is the air gap allows the relative rotation, rotation between the pickup unit and two wheel. In the pickup unit, there is a uh, magnet, permanent magnet. This only shows a uh, private magnetic field. As well, it has a pickup coil for the power generation. Uh, also, there are the pool pieces. It's made by the ferromagnetic material. Uh, it uh, uh, shows high performance for conducting flux. So work with the tooth wheel, they can uh, change the flux uh, path, change the flux loop and, and uh, let, the, let the pickup coil has power. But uh, why is it called a variable reluctance? Uh, for this, I will show the, his two extremely extreme the mechanical position. One is the left one. It is called the uh, online position. You can see there is a very small the air gap between the pool pieces and the uh, tooth wheel. So in this uh, position, a uh, very small the air gap, uh, so small the reluctance. Another one you can see is uh, I will see large air gap in the online position. So in fact, the variable reluctance transducer is, is a geometry change in the air gap. By the equation, reluctance equation, as we know, if geometry uh, of, the, of the material change should be cause a reluctant change. So reluctance also the, uh, influence the flux, magnetic flux change in the pickup coil. So this is a simulation animation. Uh, I think it can be clear say uh, some of the flux density distribution is uh, changed in the center of the coil. So by the Faraday's law, as we know, uh, uh, flux change uh, will cause uh, uh, induce the EMF, or we call the voltage, uh, in the between of the terminal or pickup coil. So we have voltage. If this uh, coil connect to a load, we should have power. So that's the how we convert the uh, mechanical rotational energy from the tooth wheel to the electrical power. But how we know uh, his maximum power delivered to the load? So we need another uh, knowledge. It's called the impedance matching circuit. So we can apply the theorem of maximum power transfer to the AC circuit. So the pickup coil in here is equivalent to uh, three ideal components, uh, ideal source, and his only the uh, resistance as well as only the inductor. And uh, to, uh, to achieve the impedance matching circuit, we need a load uh, to should be same as the coil resistance. As well, we need a tuning compressor. So this guy depends on the inductance as well as the s uh, frequency of the so uh, ideal, so ideal source. Well, so we can use uh, this uh, item called Pmax uh, for indicate energy harvesting performance. Well, this item depends on a lot of uh, lot of the factors. Uh, for example, it depends on the pickup coil ge geometry or the flux change rate. It depends on the air gap as well as the uh, permanent magnet. Or the tooth wheel geometry, like number of tooth, as well as from the application. It depends on the speed. Uh, but in this study, we give a fixed value of number of tooth in tooth wheel. We only to investigate his pickup unit uh, for both uh, factors. Uh, I can give you an example. If we have very low speed, so this is a challenge to the, this design. How you can 
uh, investigate and optimize both terms and to, to uh, achieve a p maximum Pmax. So this is a very basic theory for my study for this, um, for this research. So next I will show how we design this research, how we uh, improve, the, improve the Pmax. Okay, uh, this is a very typical the energy harvesting circuit with a wireless sensor. In this study, we want to measure the rotary shaft speed. It's called the RPM sensor. RPM is means uh, rotation per, per minute. Well, first we should know the rotary shaft. Uh, that's from the hydraulic motor rotary shaft. Uh, it has a fixed diameter. It's around, six, uh, around 600 millimeter. Well, his speed is quite low. It's uh, less than 60 RPM. So as an as, as energy transducer, his only source to private power. So we need to uh, maximize his output power. Uh, in this implementation, we focus on his structural a geometry called structural design. As a load of a sensor, this should be save power as much as possible. So we have some method and uh, mechanism to save the power. Uh, well, the, they also need an interface circuit to generate uh, electron energy which regulate the voltage for the sensor. So uh, we evaluate the performance to also maxim maximize the power. But in this study, the interface solution, interface circuit solution is from the existing uh, designs from the another uh, energy harvesting system. But we want to use it to, to know how the effect on the entire system, for example, the transducer performance, as well as the, how the influence on the sensor performance, like uh, one is called uh, uh, sample read. So high power should be high sample read. So uh, the next I will show the transducer part. This is a major study uh, in this research. Okay, we divide by the transducer design for four different uh, sub-study. Uh, first one, we, we focus on his structure exploration to try different uh, structures first. Then uh, there is a, it's called a M-shaped design in this comparison or study and show his high performance because it is the uh, highest out of power. So we use it as an example for his optimization. Uh, then we use it, well, from the first study and second study, we, uh, we found a problem is a uh, cocking talk is a negative mechanical effect for the, his rotary host. So we have the solution how to reduce this cocking talk. Uh, so this is a structure optimization. And we also have like a, a analytical solution. So a different uh, study than theirs I will show later. It's like mathematical, purely mathematical function. Uh, we also have like the uh, simulations. That's like I show you the animation uh, from Compton Model Physics show how to uh, like this magnetic flux is become visible. So we can, we can know uh, flux change as well calculate his power and the voltage like this. Uh, to verify the simulation, of course, we need the experimental verification. So this is set up how to emulate this uh, large diameter rotary shaft. And there is a close up, you can see uh, tooth wheel with a pickup unit and there is an air gap I said one millimeter. So this is a fixed value. So this is, I will start the first one and uh, different structure study. Uh, uh, there are six structures is compared and uh, there so the bar is uh, his uh, power increasement uh, compared with the reference. So the left one, it is the uh, basic structure as I show just now. And from this design, we can see uh, we can use a single magnet or either using the two magnet. In a single magnet group, uh, we can de design his pull pieces, for example, at the return pass, or either we change the magnetic uh, magnet location uh, far away from the air gap to the close to air gap, so they can increase power. Uh, in the two magnet design, we can have a, a tracking manner, so the two magnet achieve a one flux loop, so, so you can see the power increasement as well. They can have a repelling manner, so two flux loop, and uh, also a high, higher power, high uh, increasement, power increasement than using single permanent. And this is our design. Uh, from this is uh, my experience to study the five structures and get our design. I call the M shift, so two flux loop pass through the center of the, the coil, 
and get a very huge power uh, compared to others. So, and uh, of course, this is a service study, so must be uh, some con condition uh, is the same, like we use the same speed of the tooth wheel, as well some dimensions uh, is same, but you can find this more information in the paper one. Okay, so now you see the M-shaped is show the best performance, uh, why not we go a further study for his uh, optimization? Uh, why we need this kind of structure optimization? So we want to achieve his uh, maximum power density. So you can see this is uh, uh, from a simulation, uh, uh, this flux chain in the coil, and the basic structure with M-shaped and two magnets in the repair manner, and pick up all here. So if I give a fixed diameter in his uh, outer diameter and the inner diameter, so we, have, uh, we only have this area allow us to change the dimensions or geometry in, in this bound between both boundaries. But in this study, we only show three parameters for his optimization. It's a magnet high, and uh, another one is a coil high and a tooth high. So the optimizing step is the first one, magnet high, and then the both parameters. We should get his maximum power density. Well, another parameter is also fixed. You can check in the paper too. Okay, how we do that? Uh, first one, we, we put on the simulation for the magnetic sweep and to find his uh, optimal point and achieve the maximum power generation. So this to maximize use the uh, magnet to maximizing his energy product in this, uh, in this transducer. So you can see uh, we found the permanent, uh, uh, this uh, optimal point as well, we have the experimental verification with six different uh, pickup units. There are some of the three examples. Uh, I'm not sure you can see this uh, magnet here, here. As well, this, uh, because this structure is a lamination structure, I show uh, one layer. You can see there's empty space is labeled for the different magnet height. So this is step one. Step two, uh, is to uh, give you an easy understanding, I show his two extreme cases. So this is the one, is normal one. Now you see the left one is no pickup coil. Uh, so it has a very high as a tooth high uh, by Faraday's as we know. Even they have a variable reluctance but they cannot have power generation. The second experiment case is like very huge the coil but we have a tooth, a tooth wheel. So it's no variable reluctance effect. Uh, so no flux change in the coil. Uh, Faraday's law taught us no power generation. Also we did in the simulation in the console by the sweep uh, both parameters. In fact it's a uh, found the optimal ratio between both parameters. You can find the middle one, show is the highest uh, uh, power. Uh, this is also verified by, sim by experimental verifications. And so the middle one with the optimal um, uh, magnet height as well as the optimal coil height and tooth height. So this should be uh, achieved the maximum power density. So then study of this uh, structural optimization. We want to use this one to like uh, size constraint application. So, and uh, we can have this structure in this size constraint application to uh, uh, generate the highest power. This is the for the application consideration. Uh, next, I will show the Cogging talk. Uh, uh, maybe you don't know what's the talk. I will say talk is like the uh, mechanical motion in the rotation. So this is the talk. Well, the Cogging talk, uh, I said, is a negative mechanical inference, uh, inference on, the, on the host. You can see this uh, video. The, this very big uh, rotary shaft uh, is not run smoothly. It's like a uh, uh, like clock. So how we like clock? Uh, sorry, the video it doesn't work. Uh, I can't. OK. So like clock, uh, because the cogging talk will cause the, uh, the rotary shaft, the acceleration and acceleration cause like speed report. So they will be uh, cause the vibra mechanical vibration as well as associated noise. Uh, this is because the in magnet interaction between, uh, between the uh, magnet, magnet and tooth wheel. Uh, but how we can uh, reduce it? Uh, here I'm applying a uh, three pickup unit. Uh, we'll give a uh, pickup unit shifting, 
and to ensure that the left and the right one with the middle one to an optimal arrangement. So in this way, we can reduce. I, 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 I can't say we reduce his uh, cocking torque, but reduce his uh, final torque report to make this shaft is running smoothly. Uh, to simply understand, it's like uh, we achieve uh, force balance to apply, apply the actual force and to, to make sure the object in a constant uh, rotation. So that is a uh, 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 reduced cocking torque. Well, uh, more information from the uh, result is we can reduce the torque ripple uh, down to the less than 20 percentage comparing with the single pickup unit. And uh, well, they also have increased power. Why? This is because the leakage flux is become to the uh, linkage flux. Uh, as we know, leakage flux is, the, is not contribute to power generation. So the leakage flux from the left or the right goes to the middle one to become linkage flux for the middle one to increase power. So that's why the middle one has higher power than, than both, than left and right. Similarly, uh, the middle one also shared his leakage flux to the left and right. That's why it has a little bit high power generation than using single pickup unit. So that's the uh, cogging talk study. Uh, we, know we have uh, uh, both the power, power output, so it be, uh, can be used for the sensor use to increase his uh, uh, sample rate. And the next one, uh, just the last study of this transducer. So analytical solutions. Why we need this one? Uh, from the first studies, I have to say, I use console uh, simulations. It's a time-consuming uh, process for simulate all the results. I can give you an example. This is uh, uh, from paper one result. Uh, it's a study about uh, uh, out power for different size of this unshipped uh, pickup pick up coil, or pick up unit, as well as the function of the magnetic high. You can see every marker present uh, out power. Well, every marker, it takes my eight hours. Uh, I have to say, I have three computers can run some simulations uh, simultaneously, but it's still time consuming. So I'm thinking use a mathematic function, we know the input, like the rotation of the tooth wheel, uh, size of the magnet or the, or the coil. So the output can be like this, a uh, power or voltage. Uh, well, th this study has too much, uh, uh, so many is mathematical equations. I will skip that, only show how we designed. As I said, the reluctance, uh, the re verbal reluctance, in fact, is air gap geometry change. So we only focus on his air gap reluctance change. Uh, there is two, ex two the example as one is online position, another one is uh, online position. We can divide by the air gap to very small the pieces. Every small pieces can have a regular geometry. It's calculable like a cubit and a cylinder. Uh, depends on their connections or the between uh, these small the re regions. We can uh, connect the, the reluctance of the air gap by both equations. If in a series connection by this one or in the parallel connection, we can use the right equation. So that's the design. Uh, so it's a fast method. Uh, can help us predict the transducer's performance as well for the uh, uh, structure optimization. So this is the study. Uh, okay, uh, give you a short summary. Uh, we finished the design, uh, the study on the uh, VR transducer itself. Then we show how to use it for the self uh, power sensing application. Uh, still use the M-shape design from the first study for demonstration. Uh, demonstration will uh, give another uh, task how to uh, optimize circuit in the interface. Okay, uh, this uh, demonstration, uh, we want to measure the sh uh, rotary shaft speed. So the key component in here is the gyroscope. So measure the RPM, but he need the uh, interface, uh, wireless interface for forward data to the remote devices. I'm using the mobile phone in this study. As well, his power supply, like uh, the pickup coil in the pickup unit, as well the interface circuit should be also fixed on the root side. To achieve this relative uh, motion between the tooth wheel and, and the pickup unit, you can see, you can see this right animation. I show that uh, uh, as a rotation of the pickup unit, they still can have the flux change in the coil. So this design is from the M-shape design in the, stu in the study of transducer itself. 
Also, for the demonstration, also have this kind of uh, mechanical assembly. Uh, mechanical house fix all the uh, components on the router side and fix on the rotary shaft. So the, so the tooth wheel should be on the router uh, side. I will show this video. This we want to how to uh, embed this uh, harvesting system with uh, uh, RPM sensor on the hydraulic motor. You can see this disassembly. And, uh, and uh, here you will see the very big coil, that's the uh, inductor, that's the pickup coil, as uh, a redesigned M shaped power PC as a wheel to magnet. There are two PCBs, uh, one first PCB is sensor, another PCB is an uh, interface circuit. This is the assembly. The body size of the hydraulic motor is up to 1.5 meter. So here is a, a real picture. Then the size, I will show later the size. So here is the demonstration. So I'm using transparent plastic as the uh, big shaft. You can see the drive of this uh, pickup unit and the coil. So here is a demonstration in the mobile phone. I show the temperature and the RPM from the hydraulic uh, from shaft. So uh, it's a wireless communication without any maintenance, like uh, no battery, no need to ch charge battery, as well as very low install cost. Uh, we didn't redesign the hydraulic motor. So this very simple structure is robustness, high robustness. OK, the next I will show how we the, the design the sensor node. Uh, from the hardware selection, uh, both the uh, gyroscope or, or the wireless interface is can be programmed in a duty cycle operation. So this duty cycle operation means uh, the sensor can switch between the active mode to sleep mode. Active mode is mean does he does his fun uh, measurement functions and forward data to remote devices. So sleep mode is means the in the operation with very low power consumption, like a standing by uh, uh, mode. You can see here is a uh, current change between active mode and sleep mode. For example, if this uh, uh, sensor node working at uh, 1.8 volt, uh, volt as a power supply, the power consumption in the active mode is on just uh, 80 microjoule. Well, in the sleeping mode, uh, the power, power co current consumption only 5 microampere. Uh, for example, if sample read is 1 hertz, so the power requirements are around 90 microwatt. Well, if we, if we want uh, high, high, the, so high sample read, of course, high power requirement. And next, I will show you the interface circuit. So uh, as we know, uh, a transducer has AC power to the, to the load or to the his following circuit. So the AC-DC uh, rectifier is not the only reason why we need interface. There are another advanced uh, 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 circuit is called the power condition circuit. Uh, they have a controller, can control the energy flow from transducer to the energy service. Energy service is, is a compressor. Also can power the sensor with a regulated voltage. Uh, in some of the condition circuits, it has MTP function. It's called the maximum power point tracking. So they can achieve the impedance matching. So let this transducer to work in his impedance match circuit to ensure that maximum power from transducer can deliver to the uh, supercompressor. Then the sensor can have more power, so it can have more activity mode, so for increase in sampling rate. That's the interface circuit. Well, to study, to evaluate his uh, interface circuit, we need two performance metrics. Uh, one is uh, PCE, it's called power conversion efficiency. Is out of power from the interface circuit uh, to his input uh, input uh, power. Another one is called the power extraction efficiency. That is out of power from the interface to a uh, result to the P max. That's as I said, P max in the transducer in the impedance matching circuit. So we can use this this ratio P uh, to to know how the interface affect on the on the transducer as well. We, uh, we know the performance of the interface for his impedance matching. So that's to the performance metrics. Well, I will show this the, uh, the circuit design demonstration. 
uh, a rectifier is, is a voltage multiplier from the RF radio frequency energy harvesting and the power conditioning from commercial product, but has no PPT and PPT function. And uh, his PCE, I, I will say, I have to say, a little bit of high value. However, his PPE qu P -E quite low, less than 20 percentage. Also, this uh, PE depends on different speed, as well depends on the uh, power requirement of the load, for example, in the sensor. So this study to motivate us, me uh, to looking for high performance interface to increase sample radio sensor. So that's the next study. Uh, we investigated three rectifiers they are using the energy harvesting as well as a, a power condition circuit with MPP. This is also a commercial product. So the three rectifier is a full wave bridge rectifier. This one we uh, traditional design, classical design for the voltage rectification. As well as a voltage doubler, like his name, the output should be uh, double than his input. As well as another one is called NVC. This is a hybrid circuit uh, 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 FWR with a MOSFET rectifier. Now you can see his, uh, uh, his uh, output voltage similar like this FWR. Uh, to com I will show the result. Uh, we also show the PCE and the PEE result. Uh, this is a very interesting result, I think. Well, you can see the FWR, this is a very traditional design. Whatever in the PCE or PE, or whatever in the, uh, in the, in the uh, speed, different speed, he showed the worst, uh, worst performance. Well, the VD, voltage doubler, shows a little bit higher performance in the low speed compared with NVC. Well, NVC in the high, uh, high speed because high speed, so high output voltage. Uh, well, another example, like if we're looking for the PEP for, for the deliver maximum power to the sensor uh, at 5 RPM, voltage doubler shows the best performance. So in this RPM, why not use, use the voltage doubler? Well, if, if your design not be very high, like PE is less around 0 0.2, why not use the FWR? Because then we see is uh, uh, so many components, as well as the MOSFET expensive. For well, in the high speed, so I think the best choice using NVC because it shows a very high uh, uh, performance, whatever in the PE or the PCE. Uh, second, I will show the result with this uh, wireless sensor, the sample read. This is a sample read of a sensor, so as a function of the rotational speed. Uh, similar like the previous uh, result, PCE and P PE, so you can see the voltage doubler shows a high performance in low speed and FWR always in the worst case. However, we can't see the NVC result in this part. This because uh, uh, if the speed higher than like 16 RPM, so the sensor will reach his maximum sample rate. It is limited by the hardware limitations. Uh, so it matches to the 40, 40 RPM. So I have to say the, uh, the sample rate of sensor not only depends on the speed and the rectifier use as well depends on the hardware itself. Okay, so that's all the studies. I will conclude this uh, uh, thesis. Uh, first one, so these studies, we have to see to expand energy harvesting, uh, especially uh, uh, variable reluctance in the energy harvesting. We give like a uh, comprehensive study uh, from the sort of design, and also we consider the mechanical uh, inference negative to reduce cocking talk as well we show like demonstration uh, show the circuit the design also the second one we give a headline to how to, to tell you how to design high performance VR transducer as well we are we are under harvesting circuit uh, especially on a low rotational speed uh, so this can help us use this uh, uh, we are we are under harvesting as a possible power solution for the self power sensing system. So we have different structure design and show that the M shape is, is uh, uh, high performance. Then we, then we, for the optimization, show them the high uh, uh, maximum power density. Uh, as well as the three pickup unit, it show uh, almost four times power than using the single pickup unit. And the, lot, and the third one, we show a guideline to different selections for the for transducers as well as the interface for your applications. So 
So designer can uh, depends on my out power requirement, cooking total result, as well as my application. So you can have a different uh, uh, choice, different uh, opportunities if you see my research. So give you a uh, multiple choice. And the last one I have to say because so the VR transducer or VR sensor in pr the working principle is no difference. So we are so I have to say we are any harvester is like a passive sensing element. So I think my design could be help in the uh, this sensor design. Okay, that's the conclusion. I will show some uh, four future works. First one uh, is more we are structure we can find. So more structure we can find is can help us design uh, maybe new and uh, high performance we are transducer. Second one, in this study only show the three parameters in the optimization, coil height, tooth height, and magnet height. But there are many parameters, how we can give uh, uh, efficient optimization and uh, consider all the parameters. Uh, second one, we show that three phase R is high power, but if we want to use in the energy harvesting for the self-powered application, we need to de de design interface. As we know, three phase power uh, rectifier uh, and uh, is very developed in the utility, uh, high power, uh, high power, uh, how to say, system. But how we can design the high performance this, uh, interface for low speed, for the low input voltage. And the last one, still on the circuit part. Uh, we, we show this uh, some rectifiers for the interface and show different results on the sensor in terms of sample rate. It's possible we can have more, like active circuit is a, uh, uh, actually, it means the, uh, the rectifier has a controller to control it, turn off, turn on, to finish the rectification. So that's all the that's all, all story about my research. But I want to say, if you try in the Google Scholar and didn't set time, just uh, input the keyword variable reluctance in the Google Scholar, you can find more up publications. I would say six publications from me, from our research group, well, you will see another publication. They use my, uh, my paper as a reference for their the VR study in their uh, specific application. So this, I think, is my uh, small contributions to energy harvesting to, to science. So thank you, everybody. Yes, <coughs> thank you very much Shu, for this introduction, this presentation. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, as I said before, uh, we will take a short technical break, about 10 minutes. Um, so I think at like 5 to 10 Euro Central European time, we will uh, continue. And at that point, uh, we will continue, as I said before, also only in Zoom and physically here. So at this point, I would like to thank the audience and YouTube very much. Um, and if you want to listen to, to the continuation of this defense, uh, please move over to, to the Zoom room. Um, and as I indicated before, um, the next step in the process then will be uh, the questioning or the discussion uh, between the opponent, Karl Tegona, and, and the re respondent, Shu. Uh, so as we'll, we'll see you in about 10 minutes, 5 to 10 Central European time. Uh, thank you for now and uh, see you soon. <laughs>